hear that noise? That tick, 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 tick noise? Yeah, sounds like a sewing machine, right? Well, that's poorly adjusted valves, and unfortunately on these M20 engines, that's a uh, common problem with them. So today, I'm going to teach you how to adjust that and get rid of that ticking, ticking, and ticking noise. Poorly adjusted valves can lead to poor gas mileage, misfiring, premature engine wear, and a ton of other problems. So it's a good idea to adjust them. BMW recommends that you adjust the valves on the M20 engine every 15,000 miles. All right, so some of the tools you're going to need, you're going to need a feeler gauge set. Uh, these are relatively cheap and are at just about any auto parts store, and uh, they're a great tool to have. You're going to need that. You're going to need a 10 millimeter wrench. Uh, this should be fine, but uh, you shouldn't need a ratchet for that, uh, for the valves themselves. You want to get also a small little Allen key. You should have one laying around. I mean, smallest you can find as well as a flashlight or light source. Uh, you're also going to need some ratchets uh, and wrenches to remove the spark plugs as well as to turn over the crankshaft and I will explain that later. First you want to start by removing the spark plug wires and it's also not a bad idea to mark which ones they came from. You don't want to screw up the firing order. While you pull off the spark plug wires you want to inspect them for any oil, dirt, build up, anything. Uh, Cylinder number three on my engine has some oil on the spark plug uh, wire, so that's not a good sign, and I'll be fixing that sometime down the road. Now you want to remove the two nuts that are at the bottom part of the valve cover, which hold on the spark plug wires. And just lift them up and out, and put them to the side. Now that the spark plugs are out of the way, it's a good idea to remove the bracket that holds itself from the intake manifold to the valve cover. They're four simple little screws, and you can take them right out. And the bracket just lifts right out. Don't lose it. Now you want to remove the breather hose that holds itself onto the valve cover. With the hose now out of the way, there is a little nut that holds the valve cover onto the stud and you want to remove that. It's to the right of the breather hose. There are eight little nuts that hold the valve cover on. You want to remove all them and put them in a little dish where you'll remember them. Now you can just lift the valve cover right out. Now that the valve cover is out of the way, you want to do a thorough inspection on the valve train check for any loose or broken parts and replace as necessary. This is also an optimal time to do a new gasket. That hose, the breather hose that you pulled off. Uh, because when I looked down mine, all I saw was just buildup of old oil and debris. And it's actually, it actually restricted my finger from going in. And I'm telling you, I opened up the hose clamp all the way and I could not get any of my finger to go any further. And I was pulling out so much gunk and oil. So, I'm going to have to replace that hose. There's no fixing it. The other end of the breather hose leads up right underneath the idle control valve and is held on by a very small hose clamp. Remove the hose clamp and pull. And to pull out the hose, you want to go to the other side where the valve cover is and you want to pull pretty hard. It takes some force and be careful that there are fuel injectors right there. And I just wanted to experiment by pulling off the hose and putting it underneath the sink and see if water could get through. And it took a good 10 seconds before water could completely get through. And it also started putting out a lot of that orange slime, so it's time for the hose to be replaced. In the meantime, you can remove your spark plugs. And I didn't have the correct size uh, socket to remove them, but you can remove them to make it easier to turn over the engine later. You don't have to, though. It's your choice. So now on to the adjustment side of it. So anyway, you want to have the camshaft at the bottom. It looks like a teardrop. You want the lobe, which is the uh, that little part where it all comes down and, and into like a funnel. You want that to be pointed down so then you're at top dead center for the rocker arm. And you want it to just look exactly like this. And this is what a camshaft out of an M20 engine looks like. And that is the lobe, the pointy part right there. And your rocker arm on the other end will ride onto the camshaft, and that's what opens and closes the valve. You do not want it to be open, because then you're not at top dead center and you can't adjust it. You want to get down on the ground, and you want to locate the crankshaft bolt. You need a 22 millimeter wrench or, and or socket, and you want to locate the bolt. It's right behind the fan and right in front of the uh, oil pan, and you want to turn it accordingly. To the right, if you need the camshaft, turn to the right. To the left, if you need the camshaft, turn to the left. Now onto the adjustment part. So over time, the valves become out of tune because they're hot and they're cold and running engines, and you, you understand the theory. 
So they need to be adjusted. Well, if they're too tight, you can blow out your valves and screw up your engine, and you'll get poor running. If they're too loose, then you'll also have a poor running engine, and you could also blow out your valves. So to start off, you want to loosen the nut that's on the side of the rocker arm that holds the eccentric wheel in the center. And you're then going to want to get your little Allen key, and you're going to want to get a .25 millimeter feeler gauge. This is otherwise known as 10 thousandths. I'm just showing you what a valve that's poorly, poorly, poorly tuned would look like. And you do not want your valves to function like that. Now get out your feeler gauge, and you want to put it in between the valve stem and the rocker arm. You can see where I'm putting it right now, and there is way too much play. Now take your Allen key and you want to put it in one of the little holes of the eccentric and this gives you the ability to adjust how high and how low the rocker arm sits on top of the valve stem. So you want to take your feeler gauge, you want to put it in between the valve stem and the eccentric and you want to adjust accordingly. You don't want the uh, feeler gauge to be too tight like I have it right now or else you won't be able to get it out and you also have a poor adjustment. You want just a slight amount of drag and what I mean by drag is both sides are touching it it's not pinching it but it's also not too loose where you where it just will wiggle around wherever it wants and when you think you have just the right amount of play in between the rocker arm and the valve stem then you are done with your adjustment double check it just to make sure and now get out your little 10 millimeter wrench and you want to tighten down the knot on the side you want to put these pretty tight because you don't want this adjustment to come loose. For the rest of the valves, you want to go in what's known as firing order. And firing order is, well, in a nutshell, the way the uh, cylinders fire uh, among the engine. Anyway, so the firing order is 1, 5, 3, 6, 2, 4 on this engine. And again, that's 1, 5, 3, 6, 2, 4. And you want to go in that order. So I did the uh, number one intake and exhaust. And now I'm doing the fifth cylinder intake and exhaust. Again, remember the thing about the cam uh, shaft. Make sure that it's at top dead center before adjusting. And the feeler gauge is the same for intake and exhaust on all cylinders. It's the 10 thousandths or a .25 millimeter feeler gauge. Once you have adjusted all the valves, you want to get your new breather hose, and you can see my old one is very hard to bend because it's so worn out and old. And the new one's real easy to bend, and it was real cheap. It was on eBay, 12 bucks. I'll post a uh, link in the description of where you can get it, and I highly recommend getting it. After adjusting all the valves, I like to double check them and snug them all down, make them real tight, and I then put the valve cover back on. Give it a good shake to make sure the valve cover is in. Once the valve cover is seated in properly, there are two small clips that connect themselves to the studs right above the, val the valve cover. You want to make sure that these are put down. You don't want to forget this because they attach themselves to fuel injectors. Now it's time to tighten down the valve cover. With the eight nuts that you took off earlier, you want to reattach them. Do this in an X pattern to provide that there is even torque on all sides of the valve cover and ensure that there is no leaking. Now reinstall the bracket that attaches itself from the intake manifold to the valve cover. And don't forget to slide on the breather hose and clamp it down. And don't forget the oil cap. And that's it. That's all that's required to adjust valves on a BMW E30. I'll play you a sound clip of what it sounded like before and after and you'll be able to hear the noise difference 100%. Thank you for watching E30NJ, and stay tuned because next episode I'll be removing the cluster.